Good morning, y'all. So I had the pleasure of speaking at the Vegan Women's Summit this past weekend in Hollywood, California. And I want to share with you guys what I learned, um, specifically around how my rejection and my obedience made me attractive. Okay. So these are lessons hot off the stage from the Vegan Women's Summit this past weekend in Hollywood, California, which I don't know if you guys saw my last two posts, but I was acting up, okay? I had my little my little mini band dress on. Um, I had my red jumpsuit on and I was acting up and I was loving every minute of it. And you guys know how it is that after you finish a big thing, after you finish doing something that you really looked forward to doing in your career and that was impactful, you have moments to reflect reflect, right? And I had moments to reflect over this past weekend. So I, so I want to share some takeaways for you guys. Hey, Melissa on YouTube. Thank you so much. She said, congrats on the summit. It was amazing. So first, let me start off with a thank you. Okay. Give me a moment to thank you guys properly because a couple of months ago, I asked you guys, particularly like my email list, my social media following, I said, hey guys, I've applied to be a speaker at the Vegan Women's Summit. I I've been selected as a finalist and I need you guys to vote for me. And y'all did. Y'all voted for me. OK. And as a result of those votes, um, I was selected to speak this year at the 2024 Vegan Women's Summit. So for all of you that voted with your emails, multiple emails, you guys were like sharing it. I had people who um, shared it on their own page, on Instagram and on Facebook. And I was just like so overwhelmed with the support. And so I just want to make sure I publicly submit a thank you to, to all of you who played a part in me getting on that stage because it was a big deal for me. So thank you. Um, and so it was such a monumental and phenomenal weekend in Los Angeles. And at the summit. And so I was like, let me come back here and share with you guys kind of what is my high level takeaway uh, from that experience. And for me, it's all about how rejection and obedience led to me being attractive. OK, and so let me start. I, I had the pleasure of moderating a panel about longevity. OK, and so the, the name of the pet panel was the quest for longevity. And then we were it was all about, you know, this quest for living longer, but not just living longer, but living longer, healthier. And those of you who know me, you know, I'm an advocate for a plant based lifestyle. I'm a plant based vegan. I live the lifestyle, um, a whole food plant based vegan, not a junk food vegan. And it's a really big deal for me, like making sure that I optimize my personal health and those of the people that I coach and that I lead. Right. Right? And so moderating this particular panel was extremely meaningful, but I'll get to that in a second. So I just want to break down three kind of these three aspects of rejection, obedience and becoming attractive because this past weekend really gave me some insight and some divine downloads about those things. And so let me start off with um, rejection, because what I suspect and um, what I've pretty much know to be true based on being a coach for so many years is that many of us have a really, really unhealthy relationship with something that happens to us multiple times throughout our entire lives. But we have a really, really unhealthy relationship with this experience. And that specifically, hold on, y'all got something in my eye. OK, so many of us have a really, really unhealthy relationship specifically with rejection. And some of us call it failure. Right. Um, and it depends on how you look at it. So rejection can come in many different forms. Right. We apply for things. We go after things in life. And sometimes we don't get it. <laughs> like sometimes it doesn't happen the way we want it to happen. And and coaching people for many years. So I, I coach on three different fronts. I'm a health coach. I'm a plant-based health coach. So for people who are interested in adopting a whole food plant-based lifestyle for optimal health, I'm also a business coach for people who are interested in becoming coaches, right? So I've been a coach since 2015. And I now help other aspiring coaches to establish their coaching business. OK, and then I'm also a coach in the personal development space. I have a mastermind called Clarity. And so because I coach in the health space, the business space and the personal development space, um, I've seen and watched my clients um, have to deal with rejection 
multiple times over and over again. And one of the things that I've noticed is that many of us have a very, very unhealthy relationship with rejection. We have a very unhealthy relationship with the word no. We have a very unhealthy relationship with the phrase not right now, not yet. Like we want things so bad, um, whether it be support from people we love, whether it be a job or opportunity we're pitching ourselves for, um, whatever it is, we want things so bad that when we don't get it, when we don't don't get it in the time that we expect it, when it doesn't look like the vision that we had in our mind, we oftentimes lose ourselves in that no, right? Sometimes what I've seen is most people fall back. They never try again, right? They go, they ghost the whole situation, right? Um, they like, because the, the rejection is so powerfully overwhelming to them that they can't, move past it and move through it. And so the first lesson that I want to pull out the vegan out of this vegan women summit experience for you guys is that this year, 2024 was not the first time I applied for this stage. I applied to speak at the vegan women summer summit in 2023 as well. In 2023, I was also selected as a finalist, um, but we did not get enough votes. I did the same thing last year that I did this year. I applied I got selected as a finalist. I reached out to my audience. It was like, hey, guys, please go vote for me, right? And it ended differently last year. Last year, it ended in, sorry, you didn't make it, okay? But what did I do this year when I got the email that, hey, we've just opened up the application for speakers for 2024? I did the exact same thing. I didn't do anything different. I applied. I got selected as a finalist. I reached out to my audience and said, hey, guys, please go vote for me. And that's exactly what they did. And we made it this time. So the very, very obvious lesson here is rejection is just sometimes not right now, or sometimes it's an opportunity to learn, pivot, and redo. And here's the thing I tell people all the time about no and about rejection that I need you guys to really, really listen closely on. When somebody tells you no, they are not rejecting you. They are not rejecting Lisa. They are not rejecting Melissa, right? They are not rejecting Derek. They're not rejecting you. They are rejecting your offer. When you are told no for an opportunity, they are not rejecting you. They are rejecting your offer, which means what? The best way to ensure you seal the deal the next time, this is, this is the number one way to deal with rejection, is to make more offers. Most of us, we do the opposite. We hear the no we get the rejection letter, we get the rejection email, you know, we get the breaking bad news and we run to the corner and pout. And you should run to the corner and pout. But some of us stay in the corner. We never come out the corner. Like we never, we never reemerge and say, okay, this is great because now I have data to make a different decision. What about this offer was unattractive and how can I refine it to make a better offer next time. When you are rejected for something, when you're told no, that is data that you should be using to make more offers because again, they are not rejecting you. They're rejecting your offer. Does that make sense? Okay. So we have to get, have a better relationship with something that is going to happen to us multiple times throughout our lives. If you don't master the art of dealing with rejection now, it is going to stifle you. It's going to hinder you in pursuit of your goals. Like y'all got to get you. It, let me give you another. Let me give you another type of rejection too, just so I'm clear, making sure we're covering all bases. Because most people are thinking about rejection, like you know, okay, I didn't get the job, or I get, didn't get the funding for my business, or I didn't win the pitch competition, or I applied to speak at this event and I got told no. But here's another form of rejection. You've been exercising your butt off eating as clean as you think you're supposed to be eating, drinking your water and saying your prayers and you get on a scale at the end of the week and it didn't move. Or it did move, but it went in the wrong direction. That's also rejection, right? That's also like, what's wrong? I'm, I'm thinking I'm doing everything right and I'm not getting the result that I want to get. And so what do we do? 
Well, forget it. It must not be worth it. I'm not going to work, work out that much anymore. That doesn't work for me. Is What was the point of me, you know, saying no to the fries and getting a side salad if the scale isn't going to go down? Like, that's also rejection, right? You were like, oh, I signed up for this thing. I was told if I follow these steps, it will result in this. And when it doesn't look how I want it to look in the time that I want it to look that way, I decide to let my foot off the gas. I decide to run and do something different. I decided to go back to my comfort zone. And so remember guys, like you have to, you have to increase your endurance muscle. Like some of our endurance is so low. Like we have very low endurance. We have a very low tolerance for failure. Right. And so we, we end up not getting the thing that we actually are meant to have strictly because we don't pass the endurance test. Okay, so my first lesson from the Vegan Women's Summit this weekend is that anytime you're rejected for something, they're not rejecting you. They're only rejecting your offer and the way to move forward after you get out of your feelings, be in your feelings about that thing for a minute. You're entitled to be in your feelings. But after you get out of your feelings, make more offers, make more offers right? You post that content on social media. Nobody says anything. Nobody comments. You go live and nobody watches. And all of a sudden you take that as rejection. Hmm. Hmm. And then you decide I'm not doing that no more. You don't show back up on your page for two weeks. You don't ran away from your business for two weeks because you're like, nobody watched, nobody liked, nobody shared, nobody commented. And you took that as rejection. So just be, just be careful. Just be careful. Go live again, do another reel, make another post. Cause that is, that is you making more offers. Okay. You don't get better at making offers if you're not making offers. Okay. So that is number one on rejection. Before I go to number two, the second lesson that I learned from the Vegan Women's Summit, we're going to pause here for a short commercial break from our sponsors. It's me. I'm the sponsor. <laughs> Listen, guys, I don't know if you guys know, but we're currently in the run up to the 30 day vegan salt, oil and sugar free challenge here at the Plant Protocol. Um, and as you guys know, I'm a plant based health and business coach. And so for the first time in the history of, of my coaching company, we're doing a 30 day vegan challenge that I would love for you guys to join. We're approaching 400 challengers so far. I think we're at like 376 um, this morning. Look, Melissa, listen, you got to take them, them, them commercial breaks, honey. Um, and so I, some of you guys need to come get this help. Like y'all need it bad. And, and here's where, where you're going wrong. You're thinking you can do it on your own and you think you can do it on your own because you believe, you know, your problem. You like, I know I just eat too much sugar. You like, I know I don't drink enough water. You're like, I know I don't eat enough fruits and vegetables. I know I, I eat out too much. And you think, you know, your problem. So you think you're qualified to solve it. Um, and I'm here to tell you, you probably need help. So listen, we're doing this 30 day vegan salt, oil and sugar free challenge from June 1st to the 30th, 2024 which means um, as of this week, we're two weeks out from the challenge. And I want you guys to join us, join the hundreds of people that are already registered. The challenge is free. The challenge is free. Now we do have a VIP experience for those of you like me who like to be in the front row, um, but the challenge is free. And so click the link in the caption and the show notes, depending on where you're watching this and get registered for our 30 day vegan salt, oil, and sugar-free challenge here at The Plant Protocol. I'm super excited. Me and my team of coaches are going to be leading you through this experience. And so if you have health challenges and you want to see if a whole food plant-based approach can be impactful for those health challenges, then join us. Okay. Now back to the show. <laughs> so the second lesson I learned from the Vegan Women's Summit this year, this past weekend in LA is how meaningful radical obedience is. So I told you guys that I applied to speak. I told you guys that I was selected to speak. What I didn't choose really is where they would place me. You know, when you apply to speak, you say what you want to speak about, um, which I did. Um, but I was specifically selected and because I didn't I didn't say this on the application, but I was select, specifically selected to moderate the panel on longevity. Now, this is a big deal because our mission here at the plant protocol is to extend the healthy life expectancy for people of color. That is major because I've been a student of longevity for years, a student of longevity because it is 
baffling to me why people of color, specifically in America, specifically black men, have the shortest life expectancy, right? Like we're dying prematurely from things that are preventable, from heart disease and kidney failure and hypertension and type 2 diabetes. And um, it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart because when we die prematurely, that means usually that um, our dreams and our gifts are left unfulfilled. And so um, I've been a student of longevity and passionate about extending the healthy life expectancy for people of color for, for a while. Um, and so to be selected to moderate this panel where I was just like in my back, I was in my zone. It was so crazy, guys. The, it's like the alignment was so good that like when I took the stage, I wasn't nervous. There wasn't a butterfly. There wasn't a flutter. There wasn't a nervous anything. I wasn't sweating. Like there was nothing. Like I felt so called to that stage and I moderated the hell out of that panel if I do say so myself. And according to the panelists who came up to me afterwards and the audience members who came up to me afterwards and was like, you did phenomenal. And let me be clear. Now, let me be clear. We we need, we might want to put some small print here about just ego and being humble. Because just to be clear, nine times out of 10, when I'm booked to speak, I am the speaker. OK, I'm not usually booked to moderate anything. OK, and so it was awesome being able to highlight and showcase other individuals in the plant based space who are just as passionate as I am about the, doing this work um, and really hold them high in the spotlight while adding in my two cents. Right. So it was a super dope experience to share the panel that way. Usually I'm the speaker. Usually I'm on the panel, um, but I ain't, never, I ain't never picked to be the moderator. Right. So being the moderator was super awesome. Um, and because I was um, I was in charge. And I didn't even realize that until we got about two minutes in. I was like, oh, I'm running this show, right? And that was a dope experience to be running the show. Like I'm asking the questions, right? I'm telling people who's going next. I'm telling the audience what we're about to talk about. Like I was running the show and that was super cool because I'm used to just being invited to the stage and being led. But in this instance, I was the leader. And so obedience in this case was so, so pivotal and so evident because of this very reason. I don't know if you guys watched the video that I did a couple of weeks ago where I talked about um, watching this film on Netflix that made me realize that I was not interested in being a hidden figure, okay? And so you guys may have heard me say this on a previous episode here, but I am dead set on not being a hidden figure. So what that means is, I'm not interested in my biopic, my story, our story, the work we're doing here, being told 40 years after I'm gone. I am not interested in people not discovering the work that we're doing or benefiting from the work that we're doing 40, 50 years from now or, or after I'm gone, should I say, after some journalist or researcher or historian discovers me in some archive. I'm not interested in that. I'm not interested in being a hidden figure. I'm interested in being a public figure today because I'm on a quest to make history. We're going to do it. Okay. And I'm not interested in somebody discovering it and impressing the world at that time with the work we're, we, we've, we've done years and years from now. And so the reason this panel and this experience in LA this weekend was so pivotal for that is because I had the opportunity, another opportunity in real time to be a public figure. People came up to me throughout the weekend, you know, thanking me for the work I'm doing in our community and for people of color, right? We took pictures and I shook hands and I answered questions and I was able to solidify a little bit more my public figure status. And this is important to me because radical obedience is undefeated. Like, and I'm, I'm so set on being radically obedient now so that I won't have to be a hidden figure later. And so for me, radical obedience looks like showing up publicly, right? Making sure I'm free of all insecurities, all limiting beliefs, don't have any imposter syndrome so that I can show up publicly so the people I'm here to serve can see me in the public light now. Like I'm not interested in like it would, 
it would break my heart for somebody to discover us and the work we're doing years from now and be like, dang, I wish I had known about them 20 years ago so I could have helped my mom. I wish I would have known about her, you know, 10 years ago so I could, so maybe I could have saved my brother or cousin. I don't want that to be our story. I want us, I want them to discover me now. I want them to see the work we're doing now on the big screen, on the stages, on the headlines now so that they can save themselves and the people they love now with health. Does that make sense? Matter of fact, yesterday on Mother's Day, I was kicking it with my mom. I'm going to tell you all about this later, but let's just do a little cliffhanger here. Um, I was kicking it with my mom and me and her were watching something and um, I came up with a new personal goal. I'll tell y'all about it. I haven't even shared it with Kiwi yet, so it'll be kind of bold for me to tell y'all and I ain't even told Kiwi yet. So I got to wait. Kiwi is my brand manager. I got to wait. I got to tell her first and then I'll come back on here and tell y'all. Okay. But I came up with a new personal goal, right? Now the, the professional goal is to extend the healthy life expectancy for people of color. But I came up with a new personal goal that I'm going after in my life. And I'm going to tell y'all about it just, and this is all about being a public figure, like just to reach the masses because I don't, I just, I, I just don't want to be a hidden figure. I'm sorry. I mean, it's super cool when we unveil these cool people from history that did these phenomenal things. And we're like, I knew nothing about him. I knew nothing about her. Oh my God. Look at the work they did. You know, like they did with the hidden figures at NASA, all these mathematician, black women who were getting people out into space with their brilliance. And we didn't know anything about them. I'm not interested. I'm not interested. I'm just not interested. Y'all gonna know about me now. Like th th when y'all give me a lifetime achievement award, I'm gonna be there to receive it. You feel me? Because what we're not about to do is be all doing all this work to make history and still don't nobody know about us. So I'm on a mission to become a public figure. So this past weekend was uh, monumental for that moment because I was able to on stage with the mic in my hand, tell the audience, I am the founder of the first plant-based coaching certification and business accelerator to be founded by a person of color. I was able from the stage with the mic in my hand, tell the audience that we're on a mission to extend the healthy life expectancy for people of color. Right. I was able with my ears on that stage to hear their applause. Like that's that's what that because when that happens, when you share your mission with people, it's not it was not me feeding my ego. It's me eliciting support. Right. It is me eliciting support on the mission that I'm on because I'm going to need the support because we got a lot of people to save. You all know what I'm saying? And so for me, that was the second takeaway from this experience is that. Radical obedience is undefeated. God gave me the assignment. I'm showing up for, for the assignment in the here and now, right? I'm not keeping my head down and, and, and making sure I stay behind the scenes. No, F that. Behind the scenes is for somebody else, but it ain't for me, okay? And so I'm going to be loud and in, in front for as long as I can so that we can save as many people as we can. Like the only way people are going to know that we exist and the work that we're doing for the health of marginalized communities is we got to be loud and we got to be in front, period. It is what it is. And so my assignment requires me to become a public figure. And so this weekend moved me a little closer to that. Okay. And then speaking of obedience, the final thing I want to share with you guys, speaking of radical obedience, the final thing I want to share with you guys is how that rejection and that obedience has made me attractive, okay? And when I say attractive, I'm talking about attracting to me and to our company the support and the help that we need to move the mission forward. Let me tell you something about obedience that I've said a million times and I'm going to say it a million more. Radical obedience makes you attractive. That means there are opportunities that are only attracted to you when you are being obedient to what you're called to do. So I had the absolute pleasure of being a company this weekend in LA by Coach Kiwi, who is my brand manager, um, who is my plus one, who is my A1 um, here. And she is supporting me like relentlessly on this journey. Now, let me tell you something. I've been in business nine years. And for the overwhelming majority of those years, I've been a solopreneur, not necessarily by choice, but mostly because of my high standards, right? Now, when I'm talking to my entrepreneurial friends, one of the things we say is one of the hardest aspects about running the, a business is managing people, um, finding good people that align with what we're doing and have the work ethic that we desire, 
And so I've been mostly a solopreneur. Like I've had assistance and stuff throughout the years and, but nobody's been with me the whole time. Nobody has um, really had the staying power that, um, because they didn't impress me enough. You know what I mean? And so this, so the reason this past weekend is so pivotal, pivotal, God, that's not even a word. Pivotal is because um, Kiwi was by my side and I know she has staying power um, because I attracted her to me. So let me explain this. This is how I became attractive by being obedient. Okay. Because some of y'all need to know this because here's, here's the issue with many people. Okay. Um, many people believe that there's a shortage of something and that's why they're not successful. Like many people believe like there's not enough money, there's not enough opportunities, there's not enough clients in my subject matter that want want help, there's not enough people that's willing to pay me, Um, there's not enough support, there's not a, people really believe in their lack thinking that the reason they're not where they want to be in life is because there's a lack of something. And that's just a lack mindset. That's just an absence of abundance in their thinking, Okay. So having Kiwi by my by my side and the team that we've acquired in the past what seven or eight months, like I went from being a mostly solo preneur last October to starting in November of 2023. I now have a team of seven people. Okay. And I've attracted the overwhelming majority of my team to me. Right. And you attract people to you by being obedient. But sometimes we can't be obedient to what we're being called to do because we believe success comes, all success comes from hard work. But success in in the radical obedience space, when you're radically obedient, the formula for success is one-fourth hard work, three-fourths faith. It's a whole different formula. Most of us are used to getting what we want out of life by working hard. And the reason we do it that way is because we want to maintain control. And so our desire for control requires us to think that the only way I'm going to get everything I want is by overworking myself, overwhelming myself, and overloading myself. But when you, leave, when you live a life of radical obedience, hard work won't do. Like just doing hard work won't do. Like you guys already know I work hard. That goes without saying. Matter of fact, working hard is the easier thing to do. Having faith for most of us is the harder thing to do. Because when you have faith, that means you stop working so hard and you allow the fruits of your labor to work for you. That's hard AF. Trust me, at least with black women and black men, like black men and black women, we work so damn hard towards what we want that when somebody tells us to slow down, stop doing so much and allow all the hard work you've done to catch up to you and bless you, i.e. sit back and have faith that the rest of this will work out. That is the hardest thing in the world for us to do. You want me to stop working so hard? I've gotten everything I've gotten up until this point by working so hard, at least how the hell you expect me to just sit back and have faith at this point you're a wild girl (laughs) you're a wild boy right but radical obedience requires more faith than hard work guys and so when I started like intentionally setting my mind to okay Lise you've been working your butt off you exhaust you exhausted you're riding um the thin line of burnout um is at this point that you're gonna have to slow it down a little bit what showed up when I did that guys a team, not one person, not just Kiwi, but five, six other people showed up. I'm talking about people who reached out to me and said, I want to work for you. I'm I'm not even joking. Obedience makes you attractive. I attracted the help that I needed by being obedient. It's, it's, it is what it is. And not only did I attract the help I needed, I attracted good help. I attracted high quality help, help that I can rely on, help that I like feel confident in that they have staying power. Like the fa- it, obedience makes you attractive. Then let me tell you something specifically about Kiwi. Okay. I'm about to give her her flowers because Kiwi didn't come out of the shadows. It's not like who is this woman who just emerged and wants to help me? First of all, me and Kiwi have been friends for years. And me and Kiwi have been friends for years because we've been colleagues for years. She has been running her own business 
as a fitness coach and a trainer and a fitness group fitness instructor and as a public figure herself for years. And she told me that God told her to stay, take a step back publicly for herself and step up privately for me. Radical obedience is undefeated. It's undefeated. This is the biggest gift that anyone, like any human, could ever give somebody. I, she literally, I have developed and created a stage for myself. I'm going to step down off my stage and step into the back scenes of yours. I don't think y'all understand. I, th- I think you, I, I need you guys to know that, and, and Kiwi didn't join. She's not like, She's a fan of me, but she didn't join the team because just because she's a fan of me. She's a fan of me naturally because we've been friends for years, but she joined the team because she's a fan of the mission, right? And she looked, she looked and she's like, Lisa, we're, pre- we're pretty much on the same mission, right? You are helping people in their health. I've been helping people in their health. We're both passionate about this segment of the population. I, you're dope. I think you're masterful. I think you're going somewhere and I want to support you in getting there. If ever stuff don't work out for y'all, I need y'all to know it's not because there's a lack of something. There's not, it's not a lack of people that's willing to help you. It's not a lack of resources. It's no, there's no lack of money. Money is just a currency that's meant to flow between all of us. It doesn't belong to any of us. There's not a lack of anything. And if there is, the only thing that it could be is a lack of obedience by you. Because you are not operating completely in obedience. Therefore, you're either not operating in obedience or you're not operating in obedience long enough. Like you're losing your faith and you're running back to your comfort zone. So you're on, you're off, you're hot, you're cold. You have to be consistently obedient to the thing you're called to do and everything. And I do mean everything. Opportunities, people, help, support will show up for you. Every single time, radical obedience is undefeated because God is undefeated. And being radically obedient ain't nothing but complete surrender to what God is telling you to do. You do what he says, you will be, you will receive favor. It is what it is, right? And so that's what this weekend show for me, like having Kiwi by my side, my friend, we get along. We had a good time. We were able to capture this moment with me on stage at the Vegan Women's Summit. She was able to get so much out of the weekend. I'll let her tell her own story, but it was so amazing. Like it was a pivotal moment for both of us, especially since we're riding on the heels of a brand new opportunity for our company that's about to really take things to the next level. And so it is just, I just want you guys to know that the things that you're seeking in life, whether it's personal growth, professional growth, whatever it is, it requires you to be obedient first. And when you're obedient first, everything else will follow. Everything else will follow every single time. So let's review boys and girls as we wrap up. Number one, I need you guys to develop a healthier relationship with rejection. I need you guys to stop thinking no is an invitation to shut down. No, it's not an invitation to shut down. I need you guys to develop a healthier relationship with rejection. You are going to spend the rest of your life getting rejected And the only way you won't be rejected is because you've stopped trying and you've stopped going after things. And that's even worse. That if you're not getting rejected, that means you're not taking chances. And if you're not taking chances, right? Pause, you fill in the blank, right? So if you're not getting rejected, it means you're not taking chances. And if you are getting rejected, good on you. Because now you get to perfect your offer because when you get rejected, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting your offer. Getting rejected is just an invitation to make more offers. Okay. Second lesson from this past weekend, again, was the importance of um, obedience to your calling, to the thing that God is asking you to do. Because that obedience will land you on stages and in places and in rooms that you could not have gotten into had you not been obedient. And the final and third lesson is that all of that, doing all of that, making more offers, um, being obedient makes you attractive. And, And when you're attractive, you begin to attract the people, the resources and the opportunities that will continue to propel you forward. So those are my takeaways from this past weekend on the stage at the Vegan Women's Summit. 
I posted a clip. We're going to have more clips coming. We got a lot of footage, but I posted a clip, a 90 second clip of me on that stage doing my thing um, and just being in in my bag. And, you know, God wants me on those stages. And so I'm going to answer his call to be a public figure as opposed to a hidden figure. So listen, if you missed it, I need you guys to go register for, register for the 30 Day Vegan Salt, Oil and Sugar Free Challenge here at the Plant Protocol. We start June 1st. This is a free challenge where you can adopt the lifestyle that has completely changed changed my life personally and professionally. We're going to be teaching you guys how to live a whole food plant-based lifestyle without the calorie counting, without the vegan junk food, um, so that you can eradicate and do something about those health challenges that you're experiencing, whether it's a diagnosis um, or whether it's just low-grade inflammation stuff, headaches, migraines, constipation, aches and pains, brain fog. Um, are you dealing with some mild depression, anxiety? We want to restore your nervous system, that overactive nervous system. We want to get it whole and healthy. And you'll be in the classroom with me two times a week for the entire month of June. Honey, the only people that get me two times a week is people in my mastermind. Okay. My mastermind is the only program I offer where they get me two times a week. Okay. So you guys are going to get me two times a week in the vegan summit or excuse me, in the vegan challenge, June 1st to the 30th. I'll be live with you guys on Wednesday evenings and Saturday morning. So listen, we're approaching 400 people. You better get in. You throw your name in a hat to come get this health now. It's a 30-day experience. You get to make whatever decision you want after that. But at least you get the opportunity, number one, to have the experience live with a coach, to have the experience live with a community, right? And to have the experience without having to make any type of commitment other than your time. You're like, ah, I'm not sure about this plant-based thing. I don't know enough. I don't know it's gonna, if it's going to work for me. I got a million and one questions. This is the opportunity to have that experience. So this is the plan protocol, 30 day vegan summit, the vegan challenge. And then at the end of the vegan challenge, we're going to have a two day summit ourselves online, June 29th to end the 30th. And so, um, we got to, we're going to have a full, like we have a full itinerary for you guys for the entire month in June. So come get this help, click the link wherever you're watching or listening to this, um, so that you can take your health to the next level. Um, and not just be, you know, like, like having no disease is like the low hanging fruit. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just like the cost of injury. Like people be killing me talking about all oh, my numbers good. So I'm healthy. Oh, okay. That's how you define health. Oh, okay. Your doctor didn't tell you you had anything. So you're like, so that means I'm healthy. Oh, okay. Superstar. All right. Let's, let's see. Let's see what happens when we take all that sugar out of your diet. Let's see what happens when we take all that junk food. Let's see what happens when you start eating the proper amount of fiber on a daily basis. Like let's see what happens when you start drinking half your healthy body weight in water every day. Let's see what happens when you stop treating yourself to junk and, and you get rid of the addiction to the potato chips and the, and the sugar. Like, like, let's just see, like, like, let's just see what, what happens when we improve your relationship with food. Like, let's just see. Talking about my number, my doctor said my number Numbers is good, so I'm healthy. Like, wow, okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, you ain't de- doing eight out of the 10 things you need to be optimal, but okay. Um, shots fired. So I would love to see you guys inside of the summit, inside of the challenge, and then our two-day summit at the end of it. So get registered. We'll love to have you. I'll be back here next Monday with another topic. Y'all go troll my Instagram and my Facebook so you can see clips and me acting up in my mini dress um, in LA this past weekend. And I will talk to y'all next Monday. Bye, y'all.